Facebook. It's Thursday, it's 10 a.m. in the UK, and it's time for Blubbing for Britain. And today, it's just me. Um, this is Blubbing for Britain, episode 140, and uh, say good morning to Tish, and get that work. No, it's not working. Hang on a minute. Anything working? Yeah, loving for Britain episode 140. Good morning from Tish. Ah, it's working now. I think I need a new mouse. Um, so if you are watching, welcome to the show. And uh, I'm not sure where everybody is. Um, I know Peter's in the link to get in here. So if anybody wants to join me on camera, then uh, let's have a free for all. So uh, link. I've just posted and you can join me on camera if you wish. Um, there's the link. Just click on that link and you can join me on camera and we can talk. Um, whilst I'm waiting for people to appear, I want to say it's a glorious sunny day here in Wiltshire. And uh, I'm just about to find out what the weather is like in Aberdeen. As so a welcome, my friend. Peter Stewart. Hello. Hello. And uh, Tish is saying maybe it's if the batteries you need to change in your mouse. It, no, that uh, right. It's it's not responding uh, to commands. So new wireless mouses need. I think it's showing its age. It's lost its cover. It's, it's yeah. How are you there, Peter? Uh, cold and stressed. Right, let's take the cold first. The weather's changed? The weather has changed dramatically. I'm, I've come out to my little office, I've hit the point of the heater, and I'm actually wearing a jacket. All right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm just about to uh, increase the volume so I can actually hear you. Can you speak again? Yeah, can you hear me now? Is that better? Right, okay. Tish, can you hear Peter speaking? Say, say something about... Uh, the stress, Peter. Why are you so, stressed? Oh, don't employ anyone. <laughs> it gives oh. you headaches. It gives you three times more headaches. <laughs> I won't go into detail. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it is difficult. And, ah, now here's the thing. Um, right, I'm, we're joined by... Mr. Stephen Silk. Good morning, Stephen. Morning all. Morning all. all. Right. Okay. And how is the weather in Stoke? Let's get let's Beautiful. catch up on the weather. Beautiful, sunny. You can see sunny, sunny, and it's about ninety degrees, and the palm tree swaying gently as the beach approaches the front of the garden. <laughs> don't believe don't believe a word. I believe it's sunny. That that much I can take. Mm -hmm. um, right, okay, this is Blubbing for Britain and episode, thank you, and we're just waiting for, for John. Has anybody seen John recently? No. No. We were talking about fish and chips the other day, which is an in to the first story of the day, is that Chinese tourists are flocking to North Yorkshire Chippy. Oh, and, right. and the Chippy has actually uh, got a website in Cantonese. It's got a menu in Cantonese, and the coach loads of Chinese tourists are turning up at Scots in, of York and enjoying their fish and chips and taking photographs of the staff on the outside and the inside, and it's become a tourist attraction. Wow. wow. Why? How did that happen? Because somebody's got their marketing right. Yeah, and you'll be proud of this, this one as well. Uh, it, they put it down to... Uh, Tony Blair and the Chinese president eating fish and chips in 2015. Is that, is that chip shop? I know that chip shop, no, no, but as Stephen says it's a, it's a triumph of marketing. And uh, say good morning to Kelly, and it's 14 degrees in Sarnia, Ontario this morning. So uh, welcome to Kelly to the show. Uh, yeah, so Chinese tourists, I mean, it, it's. Just a good news story for a change, 
And it's very rare to actually find a good news story uh, at the moment. Are you comfortable, Peter? No, I'm not. It's, it's my glasses. I'm not just getting the reading right. I'm moving about. Right, okay. I'm just going to increase my volume because I'm not hearing you totally clearly. Um, can you hear me okay, Stephen? Yeah, I can hear fine. Yeah, but, right, better okay. Me. You're better now. You're better now. Yeah. It's at my end. Uh, right, okay. Is there any news from Stoke, Stephen? No good news. No good news. Apart from, no, there's no good news. Last night was, because you can't swear on here, isn't it? You Last night no. was an absolute disaster. Uh, three nil losing to Wigan. I mean Wigan for God's sake. Wigan. Son. Wigan. Used to be a Premiership side, you know. It's Wigan. Um, and the the reports from the people who, I you know, family who went, was that it was the worst performance they've ever seen from a Stoke team. And that is saying something. So, I. That's yeah. John's contribution now. <laughs> On Stoke City. Good morning, John. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, a little bit late, but had a parcel delivery, so took that before joining. Um, I think you just have to be patient. Give the man a chance. You bought so many players; it's going to take a while to gel. Right. Okay. So we... Contribution, John. Thank you. And who knows? But at the moment, the the support, the base is saying we are so screwed. Um, but what, what did what did the villa do last night? What did the villa do? Do you know what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um. They do all right. They aren't. Yeah, I do know. Really. Um, yeah, they actually won. Um, and Birmingham City lost, of course. Ooh, okay. I just, so, you know, uh, it's not just Stoke down the bottom. The Blues are down there as well. Right, okay. Staying with football for a moment. Uh, just a shout out to Burnley, a well-known Burnley. premiership. Burnley, a well-known premiership side who've managed to lose the, well, win and, sorry, draw and lose one game so far. Um, are actually playing in Europe. Shout it from the rooftops. They're playing Olympiakos uh, from Greece. And, of course, as a lad born in Burnley, I wish them well tonight. And uh, may they actually get through to, uh, well, the knockout stage of the competition. Yeah, which competition are you in? Europa League. That's right, right. isn't it? Yeah. Next year... Next. Didn't you lose your most famous player this week? He died, didn't he, Mr. McElroy? Uh, yeah, I, it, Mr. McElroy played in the era when I got interested in football. And uh, he was a gentleman and a superb player. And, uh, well, he made a great contribution to Burnley uh, and to England as well. I said. saw a quote from him uh, the other day no. about... Uh, how uh, one of the Italian teams offered him a villa on the coast and half a million pounds or something stupid like that. And he and his wife discussed it and said they'd rather stay in Burnley. Which they did. <laughs> right, okay, so we've done Burnley, we've done Stoke. Uh, okay, now, I'm just about to go, I'm going to get myself a new mobile phone. I can't get this one, though. Xiaomi? Sorry? Chow me. Chow me. Chow me. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Poco F1 is being released this month. And uh, it's a, a, it can bring about a price war because at the lower end of the market, they seem to be stealing a march. Your thoughts on mobile phones in general? Do you need to have an iPhone or a Samsung or can you get something else? Um, I've now got a Huawei. Uh -huh. A P20, which is just a brilliant. Now, Peter, mm -hmm. the German government uh, have done an assessment of radiation from mobile phones. Right. Your 5T is the second worst phone for radiation emission. 
the is it? Is that me? Yeah, the average phone emits 0.45, whatever the measure is, um, and yours emits 1.65. Oh, now we tell. Do you know it's funny you should say that because I've been having a lot of earache problems on my left ear and I'm left handed. No. Well, <coughs> the scientist that reviewed the reviews mm -hmm. said you have to use it for about 100 years for it to have any. Oh, right. oh, okay. <laughs> well, in that case, the one touch has been a very good phone until I dropped it. And as usual, it's about 130 pounds to replace the screen but when i went into the mobile phone uh place a uh, couple of polish guys i think and they said very good phone very good phone one plus because i'm not paying 800 pound for a phone again no i use it for biking and yep. you know if it's 400 if it's a couple of hundred quid it does the job for me got me sat and i'll tell you what i do like about it, the battery time the battery length is absolutely brilliant and i need mine all day and night and i hardly have to charge it so that's a plus uh, um, sorry. sorry i was just going to say that in that test samsung and apple didn't fare that much better by the way yeah. <laughs> well i'll tell you what's you happened asked, that one. you asked about what do you need stephen and i yeah i'm i yeah. always go back to what you want so I, I just want Apple stuff and that's my prerogative and yep. and and but I'm not paying a grand for an iPhone X that is just bonkers no. No. Um, and and then when you sort of take out a business contract and it's like um, it's about 40 quid a month three year or two year to get an iPhone 8 with O2 mm -hmm. that suits me so it's a, it's a it's a very open question uh, and you can have arguments all day long with the Apple haters and stuff like that. But uh, the, it's, it's, it's like Peter says, he, he's happy with what he's got. I'm happy with what I've got. I've got like a new one. But there you go. John Note likes nine. one. Note 9. Samsung Note 9. Oh, is that the new? That's, the, that's not a phone, is it? That's a, it is a phone. A is, it, is it a phone or a tablet? It's a phone. It's, 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 it's in a between. Tablet. Isn't it? It's a phablet. It's a, a bit tablet. bigger than your existing Galaxy, but it's not. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, um, well, it, it comes with 512 meg of onboard memory and a slot, so you can upgrade it to one terabyte <laughs> of memory or storage. Um, uh, well, storage yeah. comes with six six gig of memory. Yeah. But most phones come with six gig of memory these days, Android phones. Yeah. And Kelly's saying he's using a Samsung Samsung 7. His wife has got an LG K4, cheap, but she's happy with it. And I suppose, as Stephen said, that's the main thing. You've got to be happy with the phone itself, and we do need them. Um, my reason for uh, upgrading is very simple, just a quick advert. Uh, I Live Here is a show which goes out at... 2 p.m. on Tuesday afternoons with myself and Fonz Chamberlain. And at the moment, Fonz is visiting various places in Cambridge and he is giving a history of the places he visits whilst looking, using his mobile phone. He actually tours the area. Uh, now, of course, if he's doing that in Cambridge, I have to do that in Wiltshire. So my, my only requisite, requisite is a good connection and uh, a good camera, and then I can do yes. I Live Here in Wiltshire. Is he doing that live from his phone? Yeah. So I'm not, I, sorry? He's not using any software for it then as such. Oh, yes, he is. He's oh, using right, Belive okay. Be Be TV. What? Yeah, I, think, I think uh, Peter meant on the phone. He's not using any software. He's just using the native phone, isn't he? So is, he's it that, is it that? Is he using right, no. that? Right, okay. Basically, the sh like our show today, the show is hosted on BeLive.tv and uh, Fonz comes in via his mobile. So who hosts it? I do. Oh, we right. do. Okay. Right. Okay. It, yeah. It's co-hosted. That's and a joint venture, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is. I, I it watched is. Melbourne this week 
and at times the quality was a bit well we do so that's more likely being in a village with very poor coverage rather than yeah. the phone itself well, it's, it's not in the village next week quality will vary because it's phone and we've got to accept that um one day we'll get 5g in fact it's rolling out somewhere in some places next year um but the, it just works i mean we're off to the states in september we're going to be at a convention center and um, visiting uh museums and we've got all sorts of things set up and the beauty of it is that next week when we go live on the day that we go live the local newspaper will be publishing a little bit about it so we're hoping to uh, combine the virtual world with the real world and get to an audience who wouldn't normally watch live video watching live video on Facebook. So that's I Live Here, Tuesday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. in the UK. That's Fonz Chamberlain and myself. And another thing that Fonz is working on is a charity event November 23rd, and he's looking for people to pitch in. Um, and he's backed by BeLive.TV, and he's, he's getting one or two good guests on there. I'll keep you informed of that anyway. Right, on to our next next story, and this is one for everybody to get stuck in. The government today released is releasing 25 documents about what happens on a no-deal Brexit. Should we be well-informed, less informed, Worried, not worried, does it matter? Right, okay, there's no takers on Brexit. The old, well, the whole thing could change overnight job, isn't it, you know? Why? Well, uh, because uh, uh, European Union might change its mind. You just don't know, do you? Mm -hmm. do, you know, do you know the biggest problem we've got in all? Go. It is Northern Ireland and it's it's getting more to do with peace in northern ireland and the border that's the problem now that's a sticking point because if we do well, it's, it's, it's a problem it's a very horrible problem to have to deal with yeah do you think there is a, a solution peter well i was actually watching something i just had to come across it was about five solutions and out of the five, they're not going to be happy. Ireland becomes one. Uh, uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland become a, a separate issue with the border running down the sea. And that's not going to work. Um, Northern Ireland becomes its own uh, separate state. And it just went on and on. And, and it's not working. It's very difficult. So do, you, do you think that that sticking point would mean that we have to go to a hard Brexit? No. And is that a good thing? Well, if you do a hard Brexit, they're, they're going to have to think of what they're going to do at the border. But the problem is, uh, the last time I listened to something, the Irish, whatever you call the guy, T-Shock. Yeah, they were basically, or it was somebody within the government, basically dictating to Britain what they would be wanting. And if they didn't do this, they wouldn't be happy. But Ireland's got a lot to lose too, because they put a lot of goods on our way. A lot of goods, and we and we actually helped them during the, the problem they had. And we, we funded the money, not the European Union. Brilliant, so, wasn't it? Billions yeah. and billions. So, so they, they don't need to forget. So, whatever happens, so I mean, those poor people that live on the border and actually farm in Ireland and they live in Northern Ireland, I, I don't know what they do there, you know. But whatever happens, listen, there will be a solution of some sort. What well, there's got to be. Uh, what? You can't blame Ireland for making demands when they've got an opportunity. No, quite. But I don't. Pete, what you, you just said, no, um, it'll get sorted out. Says who? At the end of the day, if it doesn't get sorted out, we just leave. And there's, well, you know, billions we... of pounds 
Apparently, we owe them in terms of pensions for the the, uh, the European Parliament and civil yeah. service. Are we just going to stop paying? Yeah, we would, wouldn't we? Stop paying. And can you imagine a good day for lawyers? You're either in the golf club or you're not in the golf club. Yeah, but if you've if you've if you've committed your membership for the next oh forever twenty years, and then you leave, they're going to want you to pay your membership, aren't they? Because you said in advance you'd do it. Or we'll keep a good percentage of it. Oh, where I pay centers, yeah. Well, okay, but that would allow us to say if we're not members, but our money is in there, so we're still wanting to see what you do with yeah, that money. Course. And we are a, a net contributor, aren't we, to the EU? Yeah, and you're still, see that project, we're vetting it. Vetoed, 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 veto, 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 and it'll just be tit for tat. What's better? Vetoed. No. No. That's Scottish accent. <laughs> veto. What, 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 you can't we're out, we're out. I mean, how can we beat it? a qualified majority vote. You can't do it. Yeah. No, listen, nobody likes going through a divorce. But you know I, something? Most people that have had their divorce, I've seen their life goes on, and they're much better for it. It's, and it's, a, bit, we'll it's a bit like when you take over somebody else's code and you've been programming. Mm -hmm. and the code the program you've taken over has been built from scratch and it's grown like topsy and it's had things added on and the code's like spaghetti and you've got to unravel it and it's such mm -hmm. a complex problem to do it that, that it's just start again pain in the ass start again yeah um, yeah yeah so we're never going to agree on brexit <laughs> well three of us are one of us isn't um <laughs> so let's let's move on uh, okay, now this is interesting. Facebook are giving users a trustworthiness score. In other words, can what you say on Facebook be trusted by the people reading it? It's only going to happen in the US at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because who's the least that it could break GDPR. <laughs> well, and who's going to adjudicate in it? Who's to say right wingers and left wingers is right? Let's read it, give them bad scores. It is not so much, well, basically, it's the actions taken by people who actually see your posts. And if people complain about your posts, downvote your posts, then it goes against you. You can't downvote at the moment anyway, can you? No, no, but you can complain. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. Do you know something? I actually look more at Facebook and really I've cut back on what I put in now. I really have cut back and I look at things and say, no, nah, I'm not mentioning that. I'm not going to get involved in this. And I've pulled back from it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to put me off. I try. I do try and post stories which do have a glimmer of the truth in them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's true. It is, it's, it's aimed to catch both extremes, left and right, and yeah. uh, to s s stop the spread of false news. Mind you, the, the truth is not the truth, you know. It has to mm -hmm. be said that the truth is no longer the truth, um, and we can't believe anything that we hear, which brings us neatly on to... <laughs> uh, Trump is now insisting that the hush money he was paid was legal because, <laughs> because, because it came out of his own funds, not out of the campaign funds. And uh, this despite the fact that he's denied knowledge of one payment ever being made. So I can only say he hasn't, must not have a clue about his bank accounts and what's being paid out. If he didn't know it had been paid, it's a holix and it's a right mess. So who had a, He's a monster. I've said who, from day one, he's a monster. Who had access to his account to give that money away? Who knows? Who cares? He's a monster. No, that's <laughs> not... No, this isn't it. No, so, the, 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 the payment's not in question. He knows about them. He is happy with them both being made. He's not saying somebody did it without him knowing. 
He is yeah. saying that the payment was made. So we're not questioning whether it was paid or not. We're well, questioning whether it was actually legal in terms of to quieten two people in the run up to the 2016 election. Campaign mm -hmm. finance or breakages. You know, I was watching this thing and, you know, they, they put some past presidents on. Mr. Nixon said, I am not a crook. He was. They put on, who do you think they put on next? Bill Clinton. I did not have something to do with Miss Mana Lewinsky. And then the next one said, I did. And it was all. So they both lied right at the beginning. And Obama done someone as well. But what is he blood part of it? No! Blood pressure! Blood pressure! I've got to watch for that. Warning, warning. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. He said, it's yeah, true. it was paid. But what if, the, what if the lawyer had said, hey, Mr. Trump, I've paid it from my account. I got rid of her. Could you give me the money for back, please, for it? That might have happened. No, there's, there's no doubt that the president is saying it was his money that paid both people, and that's not in question. What is in question is whether it was legal or not for him to do so. That's not in question, Stephen. Carry on. It was. Stephen. It was. For, and again, I'm just going, I, I see the opposite YouTube stuff to Peter, obviously. But if the, the lawyers who come on say any personal contribution to a panapoda, a, a campaign is illegal if you don't declare it. They didn't declare it, therefore it's illegal. And that's why, oh, um, Cohen's been jailed, going to be jailed. And the monster is sort of, he's got his ghoul, Giuliani, going out all daily on the shows, especially Fox News, spouting utter rubbish. And I've lost my thread now because he just winds me up. And it, okay. so many Americans up. But yeah, if it was know. personal, if it was personal, not to do with this it's, campaign, it's it personal. Was reported. No, no, it it, was it, reported. That's a crime. Yeah, we've got election rules in this country, Peter. Spending limits, a whole range of things that to actually try and keep a level playing field. But and the money. The money wasn't donated to uh, an advert or any other kind. It was to give us women first and say, oh, shut up, will you? Go away. In the teeth, six to ten weeks before the end of a presidential campaign where he was one of two candidates, it was done with the express, intent, express intention of stopping bad news coming out. With, uh, right. so, what, so what would have been the bad news then? Trump had an affair. Trump covered up the affair. Yeah. So, hey, so did two presidents for the in office. Right. I do want to change the subject. I, I, you know which side my vote falls. <laughs> right. Okay. Some good news for a change. Uh, Ryanair has struck a deal with uh, Pilots Union and millions of Ryanair passengers will be happy. Is that a good choice of words? What's, what's the backstory to this? Well, they pilots went on strike. <laughs> they, they went on strike. Have you seen coming from, John? Good call. <laughs> you use the word Ryan strikes a deal, and I'm saying, yeah, because they went on strike. Oh, I was right. this, trying to be. I, I know you're the play on words. I, they were on strike, they're no longer on strike, and they've now got a deal. And hopefully Ryanair for the rest of this year will just fly planes and forget about the hassle. And have you seen the other part that also came out about Ryanair this week? Mm -hmm. They sent all the compensation checks out nine months late with no signature. Did you forget it. something, John? They forgot. It. Yeah, forgot to sign <laughs> the check. So everybody's ended up with like 24 quid bill who tried to bank them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. With well, checks I, bounce. Well, yeah, but I also think the individual must have enough nags to ensure that what they're taking to the bank, you know, has a signature on it. Yeah. Does it have an amount on it? Does it have a signature? Does it have a date on? 
Those are the two things to check. check. Well, I've been, I've been, unfortunately, one of my men took in a check from a restaurant for its first job, about a couple of hundred quid, and they hadn't signed it. So it does happen. And then it got returned. Nobody noticed it. And, and that cost it. you 20-something pounds then, Peter? Yeah, and the guy says, oh, the, the check was cashed. This says, how can it be when we got it sent back? You know, oh, no, I've got a check from a bank. Funny it hasn't been back to me. Because what we've done was we just went in and uplifted everything. And that made them panic and phoned me. Anyway. Right. Okay, where were we? Strikes. Oh, I thought it wasn't a bad strike. <laughs> we're on the boat right now. Uh okay, okay, okay. Uh right, okay. Now it's we're still in summer. It's a glorious day, apart from in Aberdeen. Sun shining down, palm trees are waving in a gentle breeze. But we're just being told Sunny spoke on trend. <laughs> uh we've just been told to use honey for a cough and do we is it what are your favorite cough remedies vodka <laughs> <laughs> well i have to go and get sugar free stuff hanukkah no that's hanukkah 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 coffee hanukkah hanukkah h-a-n-u-k-a which is honey which is expensive yes. primarily <laughs> understatement isn't it Normally it's about 90 this, pence and Hanukkah yeah. is like nine pounds, 90 pence. In your yeah. local Holland and Barrett. And Holland and Barrett, if you're listening. Uh, uh, it's 60 quid. Um, yeah. You can buy Hanukkah honey from Aldi. And b and Ah. At more realistic prices. Still okay. expensive, but at more realistic prices. You heard it here first, folks. I've got a talk about honey. Oh, hello. Honey bees. Okay. I've, I've just done, um, I've had a phone call from the local Beekeepers Association. And next year, we are going to do training with them, uh, with a guy. And they're going to give me training in how to take honey bees away to give to, to beekeepers. And basically, if they can't get them or we can't get them for them then we are at liberty to destroy if they're in a dangerous area and it's a great it's a great liaison of two two businesses well not a business but the beekeepers getting together with me and not having to destroy when we don't have to and they're going to train us what to do and we are going to advise them what we need to do so that's a good story about are they going to use a cardboard box well what they do they've got a, an extractor I've got, go that, re yeah. I've got to go and get a battery okay i thought you were going down a bit <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. funny enough peter um i watched we as you know we have bees on the plot yeah? yes yes um there was a swarm in a plum tree and I yeah. watched one of the beekeeping guys get the swarm into a cardboard box. Yes, yeah. Well, what, what if they're in a cavity or something, as a hoover, you, the, he's going to get a, a hoover made up for us. You suck it in and you yeah. put them in, but you've got to then move them into a box or they'll die because they can't, they need, the bees need air. And then yeah. we're going to put them into a box and then have vents in it so they can breathe with mesh. And then we will put them down and the beekeepers can come and take them away uh, from us and i think it's a great way to work together because i will still make a charge for going to do it because time yeah. is money and the, and the beekeepers of course are struggling to get bees at the moment yes so that, yeah, yeah our, our our honey yeah um, was like a f um, just over half what we got last year because of lack of bees. Yes, they've got a big problem. They've, they've got a couple of problems. They, they've got viruses to look out for. And so I learned a bit from them uh, that they take them out. I said, but I thought, what are you, if you take them back to your bees, he says, no, we quarantine them for two days and we'll watch them. Uh, so it was quite, so we're going to get some training, which is, which is, I think is, is great, you know, because a lot of people think that honeybees are protected, but they're not. Did you know that? Did you know that? Yeah. 
So as a man that's involved with a pest control business, Stephen Salt, so honeybees are not protected. Yep. My, my mates got rid of 1,500 wasps nests over the summer. Well, that's a lot of money. I, I would I would be scared to think how many we've done this year. Absolutely mental this year. The whole of Britain has been mental with wasps. And they use my beautiful screens of joy forms as well. So I'm really pleased with that. All right, I'll have screens of joy. What's that again? Well, my, it's just a thing I, I, I came up with to wind John up about okay. um, last year. But I'd I think provide I... apps. So instead of filling in rubbishy paper forms, they just use my beautiful um, apps. Okay. Right, we'll talk later about these things. I'll yeah, hand, sure. hand back to the man. They're a Cadbury product, really, his screens of joy. <laughs> I see right now. Well, joy actually is a word that um, Cadbury's have about six different products that go of joy. So there's pots of joy and all sorts of things. Right, okay. Uh, now, have you ever watched any reen reenactments? Yes. Uh, American Civil War, British Civil War. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think of them? Are we going to talk about Laycock House? We may be, Pete, John. With, with Germans. Does it involve Germans? Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I was le gently leading up to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when When is it right to have historical memorabilia for sale and when is it not? Because um, the National Trust have been hot in hot water because well, the, the woman complained about somebody dressed in pajama like material with a star of David on it. That was what started it all. And then right, the, the memorabilia came in as well. Avery um, is about 10 miles from us, and we were there mm -hmm. two weeks ago. And you've got Avery Manor, um, and you've got sorry, not Avery, <clears throat> no, Laycock, Laycock, you've got Laycock. Mm -hmm. You've got the Abbey, you've got the town itself, which is a major tourist attraction, and across the road is the playing fields. Now, the playing fields are rented out by the National Trust to the local council, and the local council decide who can actually hire them. Now, they are been hired by the people who were selling the memorabilia. Um, so it's not a National Trust doing it. I just want to be clear about that. It's people who are hiring land for a day. Okay, I'll sh shut up now. Um, okay. Are we going to bury our history? Exactly. Why do we bury our history? Sometimes fact, you know, some, it happened. Absolutely. Why do we want to hide the fact? Living history. Yeah. So the kid he goes, Mum, Dad, or a teenager goes, How is that guy wearing that pajamas with the star? <coughs> Well, let me tell you about that, son. This is what happened. And that, and this was the Nazis, and that was their uniform. And it's called living history, you know? I don't know if you know this, but you know I do a World War II show? No. Did you not know that? No, over to you. I've got the picture up there. I, I was in the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards, which used to be the Royal Scots Greys. And I've actually, in my house, I've got a replica uniform. Everything about it's correct. I mean, sure it was. And I actually do a World War II show uh, in pensioners' homes, etc. And I sing all the World War II songs and give a story with it. Each, each song's got a link. And they love it. You know, it brings back memories for them. You know? And finish off with We'll Meet Again and things like It's a Long Way to Tipperary and all the songs like that, you know, bluebirds over, no, no, the bluebirds over, the white cliffs are over, but as a fact, there's no bluebirds in Britain. It was written by an American. No. Yeah. So I've, got some, I've got some breaking news that Pete, uh, Pete might be interested in. Mm -hmm. I've been invited to a father and son's night at the Household Cavalry in Londinium reception and tour around the uh, museum and then din din at night but the kicker is a photo can you imagine what it's going to be like pete yeah or you got it's a black tie thing yes really looking forward to that 
And I've never heard of a sort of father and son's celebration, but bloody hell, that's going to be fun. Just within, got, the whole, within the House of Cavalry? Yeah, down in um, uh, Horse Guards. Well, look out for a guy called uh, Jerry Fisher. Big guy. He's called Klaus. Klaus Fisher. He still um, his son's still in, but um, uh, Klaus joined as a boy soldier with me and became a lieutenant colonel. He works within the, the military, outside it, with vehicles, etc. But he'll probably be the other son, because his son's in the hospital cavalry. Your, your son knows him. Yeah, that'll be fun. What was his name? Yeah. Klaus Fischer. Everybody knows Klaus. He's uh, quite famous within the household cavalry. I'll just, I'll just message Paul. Yeah, Klaus Fischer. Yeah. Right. Now, bank holiday weekend coming up. What are your plans? Work. Work. Right, okay. John? Um. Well, uh... It's going to be a special weekend for us because Celia's 60 tomorrow. Congratulations. Indeed. Happy birthday in advance. I was going to sing a song there. <laughs> Please don't. Well, Peter, we'll let, you see. we'll let you see. So we're having a bit of, we were going out for a meal, but because it's the last weekend before the kids go back to school and it's a bank holiday weekend, you try getting a restaurant book in for 10 mm. weeks. So yeah. they're all coming here instead, and uh, we're going to go out another night. Very good. So, uh, yeah, which means I get to cook, because Celia says she's not cooking on her birthday. <laughs> get, guess what I'll be doing? Singing. No, I will do that as well. Come on, that should have been a quick guess. I'll be cycling. You'll be so clean. No more. Never again. Never again. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> hey, if, yeah, it's I like want... the little boy that cried wolf, Pete. Everybody no. just ignores never again. It's quite, it's quite funny to watch your comments, is it? Yeah. I had to look up what a groundhog day was. Did you see that one? Uh, it's a groundhog day. Can you say that again, Pete? He says it's always a groundhog day with you. Uh, I try to look up and make sense. Groundhog Can you say that again, day. Peter. A ground. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Right. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. I never got it. If it was no, then, Pete, what is a groundhog day? Well, a groundhog pops up, and if it sees its shadow, it goes back in. All right. And I couldn't quite understand it, so it must keep popping up and see the shadow and go back down. Can you explain it? Do you want to tell him, Stephen? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> oh, ground, a groundhog day is when <laughs> you know I was asking you to say it again, Peter. Yeah. Well, that's the groundhog day where everything repeats itself. All right. Okay. Okay. Repetition. Repetition. So you think, repetition. Indeed, yeah, you think you've done it before? You most definitely have, and. Groundhog Day, the film, uh, which was a brilliant film, which you can watch again and again. <laughs> right. <laughs> sort of explained it. Um, okay. Now, I I'm just going to say that I've just been onto Facebook, and if you type in the phrase never again, do you know who the first hit is? The first post in that list. Is it me? It's Mr. Peter Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to there you are, Peter. Fame at last. Fame at last. No, it's no. a very British question, though, for the bank holiday weekend. And uh, obviously, people travel. Uh, people go home uh, to visit relatives. And the question is, will my train run? Oh. Do you know that there are 400 rail works going on over the weekend? 400. That's the only time they can do it. Yeah. I'd say it is. It is. But it, it just makes travel. Uh, Bolton's effectively cut off. There is no train, no trains from Bolton at all, uh, because of the engineering works there. Uh, so it means you can't get from Manchester to Blackburn. You've got to go from Manchester to Preston, then Preston to Blackburn. So it it makes the whole thing very difficult to actually do. So if you're travelling this weekend, stay safe, stay off the roads where there are road works, and uh, try and. Uh, add an extra two hours onto your journey if you're traveling by train. 
Did I tell you about our new road? I think I told you last week, did I? But it's old, a ground up there. You can tell us again. Right, so they've built this marvellous new road that bypasses Aberdeen, which is circular to Aberdeen. Uh, the Western Bypass. Great. They never, buy a, they never built a cycle track next to it. Uh, horses, cyclists are banned from it. But they said, hey, why don't you come along to our open day and you can cycle on the road? But you're not allowed to take your own bike. We'll have bikes there for you. And they've basically been told to stuff it. How's a road you could have been on? Now go away. <laughs> what do you think of that? Not a lot. Okay, that big tent. Come back. I don't know. Last you all. No, no, no. I expect you to carry the show for 10 minutes. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't this know what This will not be of interesting. My grass had just closed of its own. Oh, right. Okay. That's okay. a conspiracy against me. <laughs> That's no conspiracy, Peter. Have you seen um, that Trump is alleged to be considering pardoning Manafort? No. He will be in a uh, interview on Fox and Friends later on. And yeah. The scuttlebutt is that he's considering pardoning Paul Manafort. Now, what did he do? Oh. He uh, defrauded the US of tens of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. fraudulent loan applications and not declaring international revenue from Putin loving people in mm -hmm. Ukraine. Is there a list of who Obama let off? Is there a I list of the, who he let off? Just to let me Obama talk. Obama. Is there a list yes, of Yes, there, there is a list of the <laughs> Just to make an even balance. Obama let off. There is. Yeah. And the Clinton, see who they let off, because I think they did. This is a history <laughs> history lesson. What is the um we, yeah. the witch who speaks for Trump? Kellyanne Conway. You're oh, yeah. taking lessons from Kellyanne Conway, Pete. Yes, yeah. well you've got to fight fire with fire. Didn't hear you saying much about Obama when he let him off, did he? You know? That's her. I know her. Yeah. <laughs> Obama let hundreds of people off in his leaving. Did he? Oh, that's right. Just oh, the end. People when he left. He, so he couldn't get any flack during the president for it. Read some of them out, please. You know, I just. Anyway, really... Best wishes to Burnley tonight. They're playing oh. against them. <laughs> 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 well, at least that one didn't get the middle town. This is not this is not fake news. Uh, we want a result against Olympiacos. They stuffed Newcastle many years ago, twice. So if we can do better than Newcastle, all will be good. And uh, Tisha's head is spinning. Uh, I've just got a load of yeah. I've just got some comments coming through. Okay. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, We've done all the main stories, really. Um, right. Now, have you ever wanted to go live from your browser? Do no. live video? We do it now. No, 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 we don't. From your browser, sorry, from your blog. No, but wait you, down. Yeah, you've confused even me, Peter. <laughs> right, at the moment we're live on Facebook, yes? Yes, that's right. Okay. Suppose we went live on the Abakil website. Oh, the website, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would, well, that's that's another thing that's gone down like a lead balloon. But just I to say, because I, I want to give some advertising to a company called Wowser, um, and Wowser actually provide uh, a system whereby you can go live to your website without touching Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Periscope or anything else, you can go live to your website and broadcast it. And uh, I mean, the the my website consists of recorded videos. After this show, 
without my doing anything there'll be a blog post created and it will have all the comments made during the show it will have the show video from facebook uh, but it's only visible to people on facebook whereas if you broadcast live onto your blog or website you get an hd recording which you can't get on facebook and of course you're actually creating an audience for your website which is something we all want to do because yeah. we don't want people to find us on facebook and do nothing we want to go to the website and click the button and buy something mm -hmm. right so i'm testing wiser at the moment and all i can say is plug and play it works and i was able to go from uh, vmix on my desktop out through wowser and i appeared live on my very own website mm. magic right so okay. just with a, a hot uh, code or is it just a bit of html or? It, it's it's a, it's a website you basically get an embed code for their player and you can then put that embed code into a blog post or into a, a page and wow. uh, it uses the player and it's just so simple and straightforward to do um so i'm testing that at the moment and, question uh, how, how do you yeah. get people to go to it right okay usually, usually the, the most effective way of getting anybody to go to your blog is via twitter um right. i've got because we're doing i'm doing seven shows a week i've got seven blog posts a week mm -hmm. 28 blog posts a month 56 in two months so i've got plenty of content for people to come along and watch and i write blogs in addition to that and I send a tweet out saying, I've written this blog, come and have a read of it. And I've gone, my blog was off air for a while. It mm -hmm. came back two months ago, and I've now got up to 300 visitors a day inside of two months. So Twitter is the most effective way of actually uh, getting people to your blog. And Wowzer is going to, well. Wowzer? Wowzer is going to really make changes right so that's the techie bit uh and we've talked about bees we've talked about will my train run uh trustworthiness scores i live here next tuesday two o'clock myself and Fonz, and we never said where we are but we will be in cambridgeshire uh we've talked about mobile phones and uh we talked about ryanair and we've talked about did we talk about donald trump uh we didn't talk about brexit i'm sure of that and we talked about honey and fish and chip shops. So how do you spell Wowser? Hello. Hello. Wowser. Wowser. Well, yeah, there is a big, well-known website called Wowser. That's what sort of shocked me a bit. Okay, I'll put. I'll dig out a link. Cool. It's where okay. it's how you had it spelled dot com, but there is also. W O W S E R isn't the Wowser? Was, with, uh, as, I, as I had explained it, it was explained to me yesterday on the other day. It's with a Z. Yeah, it's spelt with a Z. <laughs> Do you mean a Z? Yeah, there you are, boy. I have a little story about Z's if you've got a few seconds. When I was a lot, lot younger, on my first ever trip to the US. Um, I went to um, meet uh, some people, a guy called Chuck Peddle and uh, his sidekicks who uh, who developed a product we sold in the UK as the Sirius One, which I think uh, Stephen remembers. I, I had one, several. Yeah. Well, I was the product manager for the Sirius One and I was sent over to the States at the tender young age of 24. First time I'd ever been to the States there. Um, and it was an 8088 based machine. And there wasn't a lot of software for 16 bit at that time. So we sat in this room and they're all discussing making a Z80 board. Um, and in the end, I had to ask what a Z80 was because, of course, I'd never heard Z80 <laughs> pronounced as Z80. <laughs> uh, the language that joins us yeah. is, yeah, okay indeed and that uh, was a long time ago because that was 1981 all right anyway the challenge to everybody <laughs> peter no Steve? not me okay so it's not me because my, right, my it's, it's, uh, it's not my me uh, my, <laughs> my phone's charging anyway the challenge today is if you go to facebook and type in never again do you find mr peter stewart my answer to that is yes was it? There you are. Where do you 
put that yeah, search. That's my default. Good, you put that yeah. in. Just any Facebook page. Just the search bar at the search top. Bar at the top. Never again. I come up. That's my new phrase. But I just people laugh at it, and my, my friend Mike goes, "Yeah, until the next time." <laughs> Peter, my yeah. my lad's just said he does know Klaus's son. Yeah, yeah. I I spoke to your son about it. I did, yeah. Oh, yeah, P Peter Stewart is the friend's choice, isn't it? There are a few others that come up as well. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Right, and Tisha's just done it and said, yeah, Peter, you've made the news. There you go. <laughs> the phrase is yours. The more you say it, the more yeah. Facebook. To me, to you, never again, never to again. Me, to, <laughs> to you. <laughs> and I'm going to have to put a link to my business page on that somehow. Why? Cunning plan. Sorry? Why? So people can then go to my Facebook business page. All right, so that they can type in, I've got bees. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll think of something to get people to visit my site. Oh, that's one. Um, completely nothing to do with that. Pots of joy. I mean, screens of joy. Can, can I can I just mention something? Last night I I don't know it was a social media is it so on social media Stephen you know that one so on. Uh -huh. So anyway I put on my, I put on my iPad last night it was on it was on there uh, live what do you call it that same as this be live and I went on and it was a guy and boy did he know his stuff about Google for Business site you know. So it was quite good. I quite enjoyed it. So I spent a bit of time listening to that. Yeah. Well, I was going to say um, to, to my friend in Stoke-on-Trent, I don't know if you've seen the video I've put together for Peter, but I'd be very happy to do one for Pots of Joy if you want to talk about it. It won't <laughs> cost you any money. <laughs> I have it. Oh, John, I've looked. And also, uh, if you don't mind, I know we're getting close to the end. You know, I said that post up on Facebook about speaker connections. Yeah. I still, I still want to get the actual end connection, but I, I don't know what that little cylindrical thing that is towards the speaker connection right. and the wire. What's that I thing? I did not buy the ends on their own. So I, in the end, I bought a set and about um, 12, 13 inches sort of there, chopped them all off. I then put yeah. an F. Well, I think it's called an F connector on where I bought the plug and the socket. I put the socket into a, uh, a thing, you know, a box you can put on the wall. And hey, Presto, it means we can move the TV and everything away, and but all the cables still stay around to all the speakers spread around the room. I get that. But you had the speaker connections, didn't you, the, at the end of the wire? I had to buy a set and literally chopped the ends off. I could not yeah. get the connectors on their own. Do you think that's still the case now? Was that a while yeah, back? They're moulded. They're like a modern three-pin plug. They're moulded. Okay. Still so then you, you can't open them up to get to the insides. Yeah. They're okay. done stamp dyed and, and then sealed on a machine. I didn't understand a word of that, Peter, did you? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I wasn't listening. And you're going, next. <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, okay. I mean, whoosh. Um, right, okay. Uh, it's over to you. It's firing up your surround sound in your TV. Okay, right. I've got my surround sound on. Yeah, over to John. Over to me. Why Closing me? What have I done now? Why me? Why do I always you, get this? You've got a minute to close the show. All oh, right. OK. Well, look, I hope everybody has a good bank holiday weekend um, and uh, has a nice three-day weekend. Mm -hmm. I've turned the email off and yet it still keeps popping up. There must be something sitting in the background from Outlook. Um, anyway, so everybody have a great weekend. Are you going to um, a, a hall or a house or something on Monday, Stephen? Uh, we've got a good weekend planned. Uh, there's a carnival in Devizes on Monday, and we have everything set up for an out and about weekend. And sod the weather, we're just going to go. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Peter, I 
I'm going uh, cycling. Monday? Uh, you going to town on Monday? I'll be cycling Monday anyway, because you do that. But it's not a bank holiday in Scotland. Oh, no. right. But let me tell you something. We've got you in a foreign country. <laughs> did, you know, did you know we get two extra holidays more than you in a year? Yeah, okay, all right. Did you, know that? you also get free university and free prescriptions as oh, well. Hey, you know, that, was, that was a hot potato this week, quickly. All the places have been given to English who are paying. So there's one against ten. So the Scottish people get one place, right? All the paying people get the rest. Interesting stuff that out this week to try to hide it. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm told the cheapest way of getting a, a, a university education is to go and live in Scotland f four years before you want to go to university because you qualify for free university. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> not, yeah, but there's no places. There's uh, no, it's a, it, the ratio is one to ten. Okay, and, and uh, in, in the land of swinging palms and blowing sand in your eyes, you're going to do anything exciting this weekend? I'm going to eat a lot of oranges. <laughs> a lot of oranges. And honey? No, I don't keep, do that. Keep the coughs away. You must be constipated. <laughs> oh, good. The turn of the show. Well, I've got to say, Peter, there's only, there's just never again, please. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> um, I, um, I, I still haven't got rid of my shingles. I've got these big tablets that you give to a yeah. hall. They're massive. Um, and yes, a visit to the toilet every hour seems to be a regular byproduct. Anyway, so um, I'm going down the allotment, I think, this week, uh, this uh, Monday, because I've got a huge pile of um soil that i've been given that i've got to sieve because it's full of all sorts of bits of crap so uh hope everybody else is going to have a great uh weekend and a great bank holiday monday are you going live on bank holiday monday stephen you know my life my life's not worth it <laughs> it's <a> day off <laughs> No, well, somebody asked me, the, the Canoe Club, which I think, you know, I'm a, a trustee of, I, I remember my daughter gave it up, well, she when she was 15 or 16, and she's 28 now, um, but I've remained a trustee and involved with them. Uh, they asked me if I would go this weekend um, on a trip on the, the River Severn and take photographs and video, and I had to write back to the guy, and I said, sorry, can't come th this uh, this weekend. No. Correction, daren't come this weekend. It's Celia's 60th birthday. <laughs> so right. it's goodbye from him. Goodbye from Just him. Goodbye from hello him. To, hello to Jason as well. Oh, and Frankie Franco has arrived, our Mexican friend. Bye, everybody. Bye. See, you, uh, see you later, Franco, when you're on next. Mr. Franco, that is. Or the Badger. <laughs>